Hello, welcome back to my channel, Dev Explaining. So this is part two of my uh, multi-part series on how to create a Discord bot using Python programming language. Um, last time uh, we made a video on the prerequisites that you need to have. So let's jump to those just as a reminder. What you need to have is uh, five things. So you need Discord account, you need Discord server set up for you, you need Discord application and a Discord bot with a token that we are going to use next. Finally, you need to add the bot to the channel and you need to grant enough permissions for it to do its things. If you haven't seen the first part, now is good time to jump there. It's only, it's less than 10 minutes. So it's a quick, quick uh, watch. And then you will be all set up for the next part. This is where things will actually get fun. Additionally, of course, you need to have Python 3 set up. Uh, the way you like it, uh, I can briefly show how I like it in the next part, but I have a full video on, on how to do that setup elsewhere. Okay, so just a quick reminder, if you like what you see here, uh, give me some feedback. That loop keeps me going. And right now, a number of subscribers is very essential metric for me in this experiment of mine. So you can help by uh, liking, by subscribing, and especially by sharing the link for anybody who might be interested. The more people kind of uh, are exposed to this particular video, the more people I might get to subscribe and uh, good things will happen once, once I hit specific levels. Uh, right now my subscriber number is quite kind of uh, modest because I started like a week, week ago, but I would like to rapidly grow it. So spread the good word and uh, press those buttons uh, that will help me grow as well. And then I then I will keep on making stuff like this. So let's jump into the code next. Uh, I have some notes here so that I can remember what to do while I'm talking. Actually, let's go back to the camera view because there's one more rant to do. Uh, force multiplier. If you want to be a very good software developer, uh, you are going to cheat a little bit. So you are going to use some tools, frameworks or libraries that will make you better, faster and uh, more competitive in that sense. And that would be some libraries that are good, of course. So there's a lot of libraries around and Trick is finding a good one. So uh, a good library would be one where the abstraction level is just good for your purposes. It's not too high and it's not too low. Too high abstraction level uh, is not so flexible and too low abstraction level makes you code a lot. So additionally, uh, you should take a look at if the library is really alive, it ha if it has been updated recently, uh, is it up to date with py Python versions? And in this case, is it up to date with Discord? So is it feeling good and uh, working as an extension of your skills? If you find one like that, you will be a 10x coder. So you will be doing very efficient work. And in this case, we are definitely going to cheat. I'm not interested in going to the OAuth and uh, REST API versions and doing everything from scratch. Well, unless I would be creating a new library. In this case, I'm not. So we are just going to install a few libraries. To do that, I'm going to hit the command line, my favorite place to work. So what I have created before this part, uh, I created a folder and the folder contains few things. So um, one thing I'd like to mention is this uh, Python version. This is from PyEnv that I introduced in an earlier video. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch it now. Uh, I have set up my local uh, development environment to use a spe specific virtual environment called Discord bot. So now that I'm going to install the libraries, like so, we have python.env and we have discord. So first it's going to give us convenient handling of environment variables. And second one is uh, essential for the discord uh, programming. So I have already installed these, but the point is that these go to my virtual environment instead of polluting my, my main environments or some other environment. So I like to keep my stuff separate, nice and clean. And this is the way to do it then. Okay, what else do I have here? Well, uh, I'm using Visual Studio uh, code. 
So that's a okay editor. We have other editor editor options, but that's pretty good editor for what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm I'm going to dive into env file quite soon, and uh, then uh, earlier in a video I presented the Discord webhooks, which is light lightweight version of the of the bot. But today we are going to go a bit deeper and start uh, working on a real bot. So uh, I have my Python. Uh, by the way, what version I'm using, it's uh, 3.8 right now, 3.9 is also good, doesn't really matter, but I like to use the latest versions when possible. Uh, then we are ready to move onwards. So I have the libraries, uh, force multipliers. A uh, second thing is to get that bot token and put it in a .env file. Again, there's uh, different ways to handle your token. Uh, however, one way to not handle is it, it would be to put it in source code. So instead put it in an environment variable or do it like me, put it in an environment variable file. Uh, very important note, never put your secrets in GitHub or any Git or any source control system. So keep them separate from your code. Then you can uh, distribute the code and uh, you just keep the secrets very secret. So in my case, I don't have Git yet here. Perhaps we add it later, but uh, I would not put this file in Git. Uh, very important to ignore that file and keep it keep it just local because it's supposed to be secret. So we could also set this up uh, outside the project folder. Many ways to do this, but this is okay for now for me. So this token should be replaced by your bot token and that's what I'm going to do next. So you get to see my face while I'm, this is my coding face. So what I'm going to do while you are not seeing my screen, I'll go to my bot, I'll reveal my token. I'm copy pasting it right now. And then I put it in my env file to replace that placeholder that I showed to you, okay. Good so far. Let's go back to the code. So now we are getting quite near. So next thing we need is uh, this uh, documentation. We are going to do something that programmers very rarely do. We are going to read the documentation. I know this is quite radical thinking, but let's do it anyway today. So under quick start, I've already done the install. Quick starts are pretty, pretty, pretty nice because they are quite quick typically. So uh, here is a minimal bot. This is the code I need. I'm going to grab that. It's already, uh, it, it should bring me to the hello world level already. So let's create a file in my project. This is called uh, Mr. Pomo bot pi. Yeah. So here we have our hello world level client, it's almost good to go. One thing we need is uh, to fix this one. And we are not going to fix this by putting our token here. As I just explained, that would be stupid. And stupid is not a good look for you. So instead, what we are going to do, we are going to import some libraries. Um, I want OS library. Because OS library has this thing called environ. And then I can grab that environment variable and we just need to figure out what's the name of it. It should be bot token. Yeah. So this is good. But the uh, problem is that I haven't set up this environment anywhere. So uh, we could go and look, take a look at the documentation, but I actually have this code nearby here. So what I'm going to do is uh, add another import. This is the .env library that we just added earlier. Very important line that I tend to forget, actually. So from the import, we got a function load.env, and this is simply loading the environment from the .env file. So it's a convenience for me, a big convenience, and then I can refer to the token. So there's the bot token. Uh, this way it's available for my code. So uh, let's go through a little bit of this code. This is uh, di directly from the from the kind of website documentation, quick start, just a copy paste in this case. We'll build on this later. But just to explain a few key points, uh, Discord uh, library has been 
import it. Then we created a client. Then this is the part I really love here. So we have uh, annotations that mark specific functions and then we have asynchronous functions um, that will be, they are callback functions. So uh, when, we are, when we have connected to Discord, this one will be called and we would be expecting to see this. And then we have on message that is triggered when a new message uh, comes to the channel. So every time there's a message by anybody, we get notification, we get the message and from within message, we can get things like message author name, we can find message content, and we can find the channel where the message was written in case there are many. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, very important point here. Uh, if we start messing with reading and writing things, uh, it's very important to kind of separate messages written by others and messages written by us, because otherwise we might end up in a nasty recursion loop that goes on forever. Uh, so if message author equals uh, the current bot client username, then let's just skip this. But otherwise, if it was written by somebody else, uh, <clears throat> then let, let's check message contents. And if it checks out, then we can send a new message to channel. So this is quite nice, rapid, hello world level baseline. And as I said, we can later on build more on top of this. Let's run this. Yeah, at least it didn't crash yet. After a few seconds, we got the uh, first uh, call back. So we should be connected with the bot to the server. Let's verify. If we go here, we can see, uh, here is my server and channel. We can see that Mr. Pomo, Mr. Pomodorio is now online because the bot is connected. So that's good start. Uh, how could we interact with Mr. Pomo? Well, let's say hi. I've been uh, a bit more lonely these days when working from home. Uh, thing is that uh, there's not so many people to have conversations with. So that's one motivation for creating Mr. Pomodorio bot, because now I always have somebody to chat with. Unfortunately, he's not in a very talkative mood, but <clears throat> he actually wants me to <clears throat> use this syntax. So now I got a reply and now I can eternally just keep on chatting. Although uh, it might get a bit monotonous. So Mr. Pomodoro doesn't yet know many tricks, but we will get back to that later. So I try to keep this short. This was now about a bit less than 15 minutes uh, video. So we have been building on li uh, different parts. Part one was how to set up Python. Part two was how to set up Discord properly. And then now we reached uh, part three. Well, this is part two in the bot series, but uh, we are now able to write the hello world code, actually copy paste that and modify it a little bit. But we have still been taking care of some important topics like protecting the secrets uh, in, in a nice way. And, and uh, well, well, I think that's pretty much it. So this is a good start, but it's not awesome yet. I hope that in the upcoming parts, we will make it more awesome. Uh, my plan is to actually make it do something because when you try to apply something against a problem or challenge or kind of a feature that you really want, then you start seeing uh, interesting things. So as long as we are on the hello world level, uh, it's not very interesting and it's the same stuff as everybody else might be doing. I hope my explanation was clear enough <coughs> so that you now have a recipe how to get started. We will build on top of this. So, <coughs> sorry about that. If this was interesting, click those buttons. Uh, let me know that this was good. Uh, share the word and leave some feedback. And uh, if this was interesting, see you next week. Stay tuned. There will be more good stuff coming up after this one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.